Welcome, 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 Friday chat. It's a little bit earlier today because I have something else on my schedule. So we are going to talk about marketing and fitness and how to avoid the traps of that. So welcome to all of you who um, have never joined me before and welcome to those of you who are rejoining and welcome to everybody who's watching the replay. We put it on this channel and we put it on our YouTube channel as well. Carry yoga, making yoga fun. Oh, so exciting. Okay, so this morning um, I very briefly watched, kind of skimmed through in my morning routine of kind of catching up on news stories or things that I like to listen to or read inspirational stuff. There was a TED talk that I was watching about um, fitness. And it triggered something in me because um, it was really simply another sales pitch, in my opinion. And it was a person who was doing just that. She was selling her product to, to the people that she was talking to, but she was wrapping it in a package of um, being helpful or trying to be helpful or give people information that... Did you, did you not know this before? This is brand new information that I'm bringing to you. Um, and so the response that she got from that, from the people who were commenting underneath was, um, great information, thank you, wow, this is amazing, blah, blah, blah. Um, so from a, from a fitness professional point of view, the way that I'm looking at people like that is, that it really is just a way for people to sell their product. You know, it's just there. So my point is, and what, what it brought me to is, let's be careful with what we buy into. Um, and how can, we, how can we avoid buying into things over and over again that really don't work or are wrapped in a package that doesn't work for us? Maybe it works for other people. Um, but it doesn't really work for everybody. So I came up with some tips and I like to do 10 when I do these chats. I like to come up with my top 10 things on how to avoid um, things or how to do things. And these are just my thoughts. They're my, from my own experience in my life with fitness. And if you have any thoughts or any comments, please feel free to chime in and share. Um, so here we go. We have about... 20 minutes or so, if you're watching the replay, maybe skim through it. I don't know, whatever works in your schedule, okay? Okay, so number one, this is, this is my thought process what I came up with today. Number one, if something sounds too good to be true, it probably is. If something sounds too good to be true, it probably is. And I have to say, a lot of these things in the fitness industry, in the fitness world that are being sold to people, they do sound too good to be true. And to me, it's just amazing. The studies that have been developed of human behavior for decades on marketing and how to sell these kinds of products to people have been so refined they're older than a lot of us are, right? A lot of these behavioral analytics behind the marketing schemes, they're older than a lot of us who are alive now. So, you know, don't feel bad if, you're, if you buy into any of these things because <clears throat> it's almost like they know you, you know what I mean? Like they know us. So if something sounds too good to be true, rule of thumb, it probably is too good to be true, okay? Number two, know your own patterns in your life and how you are with getting into a fitness routine or something to help your body. Maybe it's a diet or something to, to feel healthier or better. Um, know your own patterns. and How do you do that? I'm just turning off the air. How do you do that? You look at your history. It's really, it's... If you think about it, it's really not that hard to do. So just look at your own 
history, your own patterns in your life and your behaviors and what you've done throughout the history of your life. Does it mean that people can't change? Not at all. People can totally change. You know, if you have negative patterns throughout your life with eating and exercise and all that stuff, um, yeah, there's a chance that things can change, but don't 100% rely on those patterns changing, right? Don't, don't just give up. That's not what I'm saying. Um, but be realistic, be realistic. Okay. Number three. The shinier the package, the more our hormones are triggered, right? It's like going to Disney World, right? You see these fun characters, these shiny characters, these beautiful things, right? It's like this fun world, this, this, this creation that's being, it's created around you, right? So it makes you feel happier, right? These are all based on studies of, be, of human behavior, human psychology, okay, that show what is triggered in your, in the chemical makeup of your brain. So what's triggered when you see a shiny, you know, happy package, right? Just go to the store, go to the store, look on a shelf, right? And no, notice what is more attractive to you on the shelf. What makes you feel happier, right? And then what when you see something and, and it's shiny and it, and it makes you feel happier, right? The serotonin is like, woohoo, in the brain. Um, it makes you feel happy. It makes you feel more hopeful, right? You kind of buy into it. You believe it a little bit more because you want to, right? So then you are primed to buy it. You are primed, okay? That's like the science behind it. It's pretty crazy, but it makes sense. They're priming you to buy their product. Number four, keep in mind in your own fitness and eating habits in your life, keep in mind the tortoise and the hare analogy. Um, so, you know, we all want this quick fix in life, right? We want to look better. We want to feel better, right? Um, and we want it now, right? If I start working out this brand new routine because I've been promised that I'm going to have a flat belly and big biceps, you know, after I do this routine, well, I'm going to start this routine and then I want to look like that tomorrow, right? Most of us are like that. We want the change to happen now, okay? So just keeping in mind that the, the slow and steady, slow and steady is what really does win the race. So getting into a routine um, and knowing that it's a marathon and not a sprint. Uh, number five, like I was saying a few minutes ago, marketing has been studied for decades, okay, with human behavior. Don't let it get you down if you've fallen prey. This is also a part of the cycle. So you feel bad, right? You've fallen prey, you feel bad. And then you see something bright and shiny, makes you feel happy. Ooh, maybe I'll buy that, right? And then you buy it and then you feel better, right? And then the whole cycle just happens again just keeps happening, right? We want something to make us feel better, so we get it, right? Maybe it's a, a fitness package or um, a brand new bike, whatever it is, um, right? This is, this is it, this is what's gonna make me feel better. And buying it helps to trigger those, those hormones in my brain, the, the chemicals in my brain that make me feel better, right? Um, so you go up, then you go down. Then you need something to go back up, right? So you buy and then you feel bad again, right? So it's that whole cycle, that whole cycle. Just being aware of it, being aware of the cycle is very important. Number six, so do your own research behind what people are selling you, okay? Um, this is what I've heard recently on somebody's, what they were trying to sell. Um, the title was Eat More, Do Less. And that's fine if, if you explain it and if you, um, 
But what it is, it's a tricky, it's a catchy title that's bringing you in, right? Hey, Tony, it's a catchy title that's bringing you in to the discussion, but then are you buying into that title only or are you listening to the discussion and the research underneath it? Right. So if I if I hear that and I'm somebody who has not, you know, has kind of negative patterns in my life and I hear eat more, do less. I'm not really doing the research behind it because I want what the easiest thing is to do. Right. So I just somebody tells me eat more, do less. OK, I'm going to eat more and I'm going to do less. So they said it's going to work. So I'm going to do that. And I'm not even going to care what I'm eating. You know, so I just eat whatever I want. Right. And I literally sit on the couch. And do nothing okay um, and why isn't this working this is what this person sold me right so do the research listen to what's behind it and know what's best for your body um, number seven we're getting through this pretty quick so hope that makes you happy um, so have it adopting new patterns that make a lasting change in your life right? Just because you have old patterns that have repeated and repeated and repeated doesn't mean that you can't adopt new patterns. Like we were saying before, can people change? Yes, people can change. But how about creating a whole new pattern for yourself, right? So in other words, if something happens, if you enter into a, a brand new fitness routine and you know that typically, you know, you, you lose interest after a while and you just drop out of it, um, change the pattern. Okay. So let's say you, um, drop out of the program instead of just doing nothing, have it just change it, you know, change the program, go for a walk instead of going to, um, that bike ride, right? Maybe, maybe those things, maybe it's just a sign that that's not something that you really want to be doing. So it's not going to last for you. So making new patterns, right? Um, fad diets are called fad for a reason. They're called fad for a reason. So it, cre it makes us have patterns, right? When we buy into those quick fad things, right? It's really just reinforcing the pattern that we always tend to have. If we have a pattern that's... Um, negatively based like that. I'm using the wrong words, I think. Um, but speaking of diets, okay, if you're a fad diet person, right, this is it, this is gonna be my quick fix, this is going to be the answer, this one, this one, this one. Um, just know that, you know, if it's a fad diet, it's probably gonna have the same results in your life, but maybe not, right, if your patterns change. So yes, be hopeful that the patterns can change, but don't rely on that. Don't rely on that. Uh, number eight, less is more for longer term. So when you're creating a new routine for yourself, a new pattern, okay? Think of what realistically you can fit into your routine and your life. What is realistic for you? So start out with less. This is just my advice. Start out with less and see how far that gets you. Okay, so don't overdo it, right? Okay, I'm gonna start this new routine. It's gonna be every day. It's gonna be, you know, 20, 30 minutes a day. I'm gonna do, 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 do it. And then what happens is, you know, the, hard, the higher the climb, the harder the fall, fall sort of thing. Um, so less is more, you know? Maybe do three times a week something start out with that maybe two times a week you know and and change it up you know let it be a something that you can change maybe one day you do a walk maybe the next day you meditate right um we don't want to forget about the mind as a part of all of this very important to keep the mind healthy and happy so meditation visualizations getting a uh, restorative practice in to your life, right? Really resting, right? Yoga Nidra, that kind of thing. And teaching the body and the cells to um, create a pattern of restoration as well as 
movement and fitness and all that. It's all a part of it. Okay, number nine, whatever you do, make it enjoyable so that you'll wanna continue, right? If you don't like going for that bike ride, if you really, if you're not looking forward to it, if it becomes something like, oh, I have to go to the gym or, oh, you know, I have to do this, right? I have to go to training or, if you're not enjoying it long-term, what's gonna keep you doing it? You know, some people say discipline. Yes, that's very important discipline um, in some ways, but for me, if I'm not happy in my own body and my own movement, scientifically, it doesn't feel right. I feel like something is not working properly in my being. Right, so then that affects me on a, a whole level. Um, I mean, that's a whole nother discussion, really. Um, so my point is be happy in what you choose to do in your fitness, in your habits, in your patterns, in your eating. Make it enjoyable, you know? I love going for walks. That's like one of my favorite things to do. Um, and David and I, my husband, we do it together every day and um it's something that we've always done in our in our marriage we just that's like one of the basic things we've always done we've walked 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 so maybe you like to walk with somebody maybe you like to listen to, to something on a book on tape or maybe just nature uh looking around you right experiencing the world in that way um maybe Maybe you like to get on the floor and just move your body around, right? Keep it simple and make it something that's really enjoyable, right? We have these habits in life that we, that we just, that we form. So a lot of these things that I'm talking about are habits that can be formed, better habits that can be formed. Like rolling around on the floor and stretching your body and breathing and moving. Maybe put on some music, right? And just move your body around for five minutes, right? And just notice the difference in how you feel. And if that feels good, then maybe that's something that naturally you're gonna put into your, your routine and do it more. I think I flogged that one to death. I think you got that one. Okay, so number 10, this is my 10, 10, 10, number 10. Routine, 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 but be flexible. Make a routine, like I was just saying, a habit, really. Make a good habit, right? So put this routine, hi, Moonier. Make it a routine that you can go to every day. So like when David and I go for a walk every day, it's around the same time, right? So the body, the memory, the muscle memory of the body starts to learn. It's like when you think about a dog, you know how dogs know when they have to eat, when they wanna go for a walk, or when they're supposed to go for a walk, right? If they have a daily walk every day, that's how I am. Because I go for a walk at the same time, around the same time every day, and it's almost like my mind has left my body and my body is just carrying me out the door. I'm not even thinking about it. It's just what I do, right? I'm good, Munir, how are you? So creating that type of routine for yourself so that you don't even go there. You don't even go to the thinking part of it, right? It's just a routine, it's what you do. But be flexible, right? So if something happens in your life and you can't do it at that time, maybe, do it at a different time or skip that day and let that be okay. So anyway, please replay this if you haven't seen it from the beginning and um, if you're interested, it's just 10 things that I have in my head that I've now given to you, gifted to you. Um, I'm glad to hear that, Munir. Um, and if you have any ideas or any um, chats, comments about you know, the fitness world, the, the diet world, and how we fall into these traps all the time, right? And how we can avoid that. Please chime in and let me know. I'll see you next Friday for the next chat. Let me know if there's any topic that you wanna to cover.
if anybody is interested. Or if you want to join me on a chat, if you have something you want to talk about, we can do that too. All right, I hope everybody's great and um, I'll see you soon.